Hey guys, Tom itself here. Today I want to talk about team tactics. Uh, mostly just the idea of what is a clear area, a safe area, and I'm going to use an example of moving forward and clearing an area with a teammate. I've played with my friends enough that most of this stuff is completely unspoken, undiscussed, and pretty much not even talked about. So actually going back and figuring out what all is happening and then describing it appropriately is a little bit of a challenge for me, so I hope this stuff makes sense and I hope it's useful to you. Now I've taken B and I want to head over towards that red hut, clear that side of the map and get all the way back around to A and make sure there's no one coming from that direction. I'm going to stay close to this wall so anybody above me has a hard time seeing and shooting at me. But wait a second, you see the guy in front of me? I'm going to have to use that rock directly in front of me as cover and step away from the cliff making me an easier target for the people up there. Because the guys up on that cliff, they're above me behind the sandbags and I'm just down here and they're shooting down at me. I get kind of lucky and managed to stay alive. Well, let's go into theater mode and see why that worked. I'm going to take out the first guy on the far left, and one of the guys who was up above on that cliffside path is going to get taken out by shore, and he's going to advance forward. He's going to see that I'm in trouble, and he's going to get some shots into the ghost guys, and that's what lets me get the kill. And then from Shore's point of view, it actually becomes a little more obvious. He gets the first kill, but he hears and sees the silenced gunfire and knows to push forward and get some shots into those guys. He gets a kill and an assist for it. And for me, he saved my life, so thanks, Shore. If we watch from one of our victim's points of view, you can see they're pretty worried about the rock, and they have a hard time noticing and shooting me as I'm all the way up next to the cliff, and I do get a little bit of cover from the rock, but mostly it's just as bad shooting. He's paying too much attention to me, both of them are, and that's how Shore gets the easy kill and assist there. Pretty straightforward, just making myself a distraction there. At this point, we both got the same idea. We're going to clear out the burned out village and secure everything up to the A domination flag and get them trapped behind it. Alright, I had to come back and kind of add an explanation at this point. My mentality when I'm doing this isn't that I'm looking to cover him, I'm pretty sure he can handle himself. Rather, it's that I would like to pick up my own kills, thank you very much, and the best time to do that is when he has his gun lowered and he's not looking in their direction. That's about the only time I'm going to be able to pick up a kill around my friend here. As we move into the village, I'm going to let Shore be the one to go first. He's going to have a lot better cover behind that box than I will out in the open, and so I want him to be the one drawing their attention first. As soon as he's taking care of anyone looking through the village from that basket, I need to move forward into the hut on the left and make sure there's no one sitting on the outside of the map by that AA gun or just further back behind the basket because he's going to push up towards that L-shaped hut and uh, that would be a bad surprise for him. So Shore is playing the forward role here. I'm trying to cover his flanks so that he can keep moving forward in a pretty quick fashion and not have any unpleasant surprises. In this way, two people can clear things twice as fast in a much safer fashion. And it's really moving through an area that fast, not that strategically, that catches most people off guard. Would certainly think that at first glance it almost looks like we're running recklessly through here, but we're not. But Shore died there, so let's look at why that happened. On his screen, the guy's already ready for him as he comes around the corner. Not going to win that gunfight. But if we look at the enemy's point of view, we'll see that the reason he's already ready is because he saw me in the window, and Shore just runs into his line of sight. Now, I don't know if that's my fault there. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at my view, and you can see what I saw of that guy. Not very much. I didn't even notice it until I stepped through frame by frame in the recording. But I do manage to avenge him immediately. Alright, that was not an amazing example. But we did kill a bunch of people, and we moved through there in a reasonably safe fashion. It should give us pretty good odds against most anyone already in the village. At some point, you do just have to take the initiative and push around the corner. There's no sense in delaying it unnecessarily, but just getting there and doing what you have to do. But I think the biggest advantage to moving forward like that with a partner or a team is that you can clear a lot of area really fast in a pretty safe way. You can get over to where you want to be camping the mat and not have to worry about holding a position that you don't really want to. You know, if we had to hold back behind this L-shaped hut, I don't think that would be quite as preferable. Also, by how fast we're able to change what area of the map we control, that surprises a lot of people because they'll come back for a revenge kill, but we've already moved up two or three buildings and are already waiting for them as they come to us. We never talked about this or planned it out. It just kind of starts to happen after you've been playing with the same people for long enough and playing on the same map so that you know them pretty well. And really the question is, how are people going to get to the gunfights that they're going to win? Mostly just because they're going to surprise people who are running out in the open, but also because they're going to be at the right range for their weapon. So that was both of us with the assault rifles. I often run SMGs on the map, so here's a couple examples of me running through the village in that way with a teammate, clearing things out with an SMG. So here I take the lead role, I wait until my teammate's ready to provide cover fire to the basket, and then I move up to the L-Hut. 
Since my teammate's not back further behind me, then I move forward to the AA gun and check that, and I wait until we're both going to have line of sight on the A DOM point before I move around the corner, hopefully tip the odds by making it two on one instead of just a one on one gunfight. This is almost exactly the same, except I come up on the outside the first time here, see the red dot, I can see he's behind the cover, so I step forward and take him, and then I move into a similar role that I did with the assault rifle, except since I don't have the longer range, I go ahead and move forward first, I don't want to get along the longer line of sight on the outside of the map here, and then it's back to the same way the previous clip went. And here's another clip, same idea again, except this time there's a guy behind the basket on the outside map of the L hut. And in this case, my teammate moves forward, I think he sees him, and so I move forward to engage the guy too, and yet make it a two-on-one gunfight, so we have the advantage. I know team fire is a bigger deal in Halo, but in Call of Duty, as long as you can avoid giving away multi-kills, it can really help ensure that your team at least maintains map control over an area. And finally, some easy mode with the Blackbird up. The important thing to note here is staying away from the A-DOM point as we get close until my teammate's ready to help me. I could just charge in there, but I would definitely be in over my head because I see at least three or four arrows over there, and they're looking towards the direction where I've been firing an unsilenced weapon. Military tacticians might refer to this as something like bounding cover, where one person covers the advance of the next, but in my mind, that implies far more defensive approach than we actually use. Mostly, we're just trying to get kills as fast as possible. Being near your teammates, ready to pick up that easy kill while they're sprinting, works pretty well. But also having a different line of sight from your teammates can help a lot. Just make it possible to pick up a kill that they wouldn't otherwise be able to get, or just apply some more pressure to the enemies. So that was something a little different. I'm really not sure what kind of response I'll get from, well that was obvious, to wow that was really useful. Uh, the important thing is to be playing with competent players who can support you when you try to move around the map. Again, this is the sort of thing that has just gotten ingrained, and so actually explaining it is kind of tricky for me. I hope the explanation made sense. Uh, leave your comments, and thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. You know, I have a feeling I'll do something similar for some other areas on different maps, but we'll just have to see.